Because when you are proven, God will give everybody the proof that I chose you.
Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to all of you that are joining us. Come right on in. Come in sharing. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Invite some friends. Invite your family members. Start your watch party. Come right on in. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We magnify you. We magnify you. Lord, we praise you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Glory to God. All right, God bless you, everybody. I am absolutely excited and ignited that you all have decided to join us tonight, join us tonight uh, for a powerful teaching. So I want everybody to come on in. Uh, all of our Destiny partners, all of our partners, Destiny partners, come right on in, and we're going to get right into the Word tonight. Uh, as you can see, I'm home. Uh, we didn't do the church tonight. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll be back there uh, live on Sunday. Uh, but I wanted to just teach and share the word with everybody. And I want to just say hello to everybody that's joining. Latoya Williams, bless you. Paris, Logan, we miss you all too. Charity, uh, Ramsey, we miss all of the saints. Brady, go forth. Amen. Sister Rosier, uh, Mother Hines, all of those who are joining, blessings to you all. All of the saints of God, we certainly love you. We certainly appreciate you. Um, God is kind. Let me see what Brady is saying. Coronavirus, deal on that shirt, Bishop. Uh, ha, ha, ha. You, Mother, Mother Wilson, the Lord bless you. God bless you, Mother Wilson. Amen. Glory to God. All of the saints of God, all of those that are joining us uh, tonight, let, let us continue to join in. And let's get started tonight. Let's get started and 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 uh, get into the word. Uh, there is a word from the Lord tonight. And uh, tonight, as we begin Passover, as we begin Passover, this is uh, Holy Week. And as we begin uh, Passover, uh, we understand that this is the most holiest time of the year, uh, especially for all of us who are connected to Christ or are part of Christendom. Uh, this is the beginning of Passover. And uh, we all know what Passover means. Passover is when we celebrate the children of Israel, not only the children of Israel, uh, the deaf angel passing over the door post during the plagues, uh, but also them passing over through the Red Sea to the promised land. Uh, so uh, even as we get started tonight, I think that we need to be challenged to celebrate our victories. We need to be challenged to celebrate our victories, the many things that God has brought us through. And I know that Corona is uh, pretty much trying to take everybody's attention, uh, but there are many victories. There are many victories that God has brought you through and you should continue to celebrate those victories. So as we are now approaching the uh, time we're in that uh, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, which will be on Sunday. Uh, let us set aside time to pray. Let us set aside time to consecrate. Let us set aside time to uh, just seek the face of God in regards to his plan for your life. I want you to know that uh, even as the word of God has said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, I know the thoughts 
that I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Uh, so God does have a plan. He has a plan for your life after Corona. He has a plan for your life. Don't allow the enemy to get you distracted uh, to the point that you forget that God still has a plan for your life. So I just want to delve right into the word tonight. If you have your Bibles, and I pray that you do, I want you to uh, go with me to St. John, the 13th chapter of St. John. I'm going to do quite a bit of reading tonight, but I want to read two key verses uh, to start our teaching tonight. I want to read two key verses to start our teaching tonight. John 13, and I'm going to read the 15th and the 16th verse. And it says, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, and nor is he who is sent greater than he who has sent him. For if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Uh, tonight, I want to teach on the art of service, the art of service. Uh, you cannot speak on service without speaking on suffering because they run together simultaneously. They run together. Uh, you cannot talk about service or being a servant without talking about suffering. And I know that many people are questioning God right now because they want to know, uh, did God allow this? And why would God allow the thing to happen like COVID-19? And, and why are we suffering like this? Well, I want to say to you that Jesus never fooled us from the beginning of his ministry uh, to the time of his ascension, even until now. Jesus said to his disciples when he first started, listen to this, when he first started gathering together his people or gathering together his team, uh, there was one disciple that came to him and said, well, hey, I see you working miracles. I see that uh, great signs and wonders are following you. He said, hey, I want to follow you. He said, what do I need to do? He said to him, said, okay, well, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to take up your cross and follow me daily. You're going to have to take up your cross, take up your cross. If any man shall come after me, he, sh he must take up the cross. Now, anybody that knows anything about history knows that the cross was representative of execution. It was a symbol of death. It was not a symbol of life like it is now, but back then it was in the execution. It was almost like Jesus was saying to them, if any man comes after me, then he must take up the gas chamber or he must take up the lethal injection. In other words, a part of being a Christian uh, has everything to do with suffering. Uh, I know that we are in a, a time now where people are always talking about prosperity and we're talking about name it, claim it, uh, 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 glab it, and you will have it. Uh, nev nevertheless, uh, Jesus, from the beginning of his ministry, always at the forefront of it, allowed us to know that it will cost you something. It will cost you something. Uh, it will cause you to suffer. You will have to sometimes, uh, the old saints used to say, give up the right for the wrong. So uh, my explanation to all of those who are saying, well, did God do this? Or is God responsible for this? Uh, my explanation is that Christianity is still a suffering way. And um, whether it is, was the COVID-19 or whether it was the swine flu or whether it was the flu in general, there's just many people that's died of the flu as even COVID-19, but nevertheless, sickness and disease, cancer, whatever the case may be, uh, this is a suffering way. And in order for it, it, being that it is a suffering way, it is a way of service, okay? It is a way of service. So tonight I'm talking about the art of service. And uh, here in this text, uh, the very first verse, let me go right into it. It says, now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, 
that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. I want to just touch on this and let you all know something, that Jesus will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you even until the end of the world. What I love about Jesus is he does not change up. He does not change up. You got a whole lot of people based upon convenience. They have relationships with you. I'm going to say that again. There are a lot of people who have relationships with you based upon convenience or, you know, maybe you're well liked and they want to be around you in order for them to be able to say, hey, I know them or, or I'm cool with them or I, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm associated with the Strongs or whoever uh, the case may be. And many times people are associated based upon convenience. But the true sign of someone who really loves you and care about you is that they stay with you until the end. What do you mean, Bishop? What I mean by that is the true mark of a servant and the true mark of a real friend is someone who sticks with you through the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, many times when you are a real friend to someone or you really love someone, you stick with them even when it hurts your own reputation. Now, we know there are those who say, oh man, I can't be associated with them and I can't talk to them because if I talk to them, uh, they'll think this or they may feel this way about me, but I'm so glad. Hallelujah. I'm about to get happy. I'm so glad that Jesus was not ashamed of me. I'm so glad that Jesus is not ashamed of you. And there may be a group of people that may not want to be bothered with you or may not want to be associated with you because of your struggle or maybe because of, of, of things you've done in the past. But I'm so glad that when Jesus decided to love us, he has loved us until the end. He's, he loves you to the end of your struggle. He loves you to the end of your pressure. He loves you. Listen, he's walking right through it with you. And even right now while we're experiencing this coronavirus and those I have friends in New York and people who have passed on and who have, have lost their lives to this horrific disease but I'm telling you right now Jesus will love us until the end and the songwriter the hymnologist said there is not a friend like the lonely Jesus no not one he will stick with you through uh, it all and to the very end he won't abandon you amen uh, oh glory to God I'm I'm going to say that again. He will not abandon you. He will walk right with you, right through the storm, the rain, and even right through this time and this pressure that we're all experiencing. So Jesus loved his disciples to the end, but this is the point. And supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's uh, son to betray him. Now, let me talk about let me talk about this a little bit. If you're taking notes, just take them as, a, as you can grab them. Uh, I want you to know that betrayal leaves clues. Betrayal leaves clues. You need to understand that. You don't have to be surprised by betrayal if you watch the clues. Okay, Jesus was never surprised, and you will see this throughout the text as I continue to teach. Jesus was never surprised about being betrayed. It was already prophesied that he would be betrayed, but let listen to this. When Psalms prophesied about Jesus being betrayed, it never named a name, and this is going to bless and help some of us. It never, the scripture never named, it never said Judas would betray Jesus, okay? It did allude to one of the apostles or it did allude to one of his disciples, but it never named a name. Now, what does that mean? It did not name a name. So that means that any of Jesus' disciples were susceptible to becoming the one who betrays Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? So what, what, what happened? What happened? Why didn't the others not betray him? Or why didn't it happen with all of them? Or why did it just happen with Judas? Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you open up your heart and you open up your mind for the spirit of betrayal, it will overwhelm you because sometimes we are human. We are humanity. We are human beings. And sometimes seeing other people get blessed and you may not be getting what you feel like you should be getting or maybe seeing other people in a 
authority and, and you feel like, Lord, when is my time going to come or whatever the case may be? Uh, you have to be very careful that you guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And you have to know for yourself. Hear me, people of God. You have to know for yourself and, and say, Lord, whatever you do, keep my heart pure. Because look, John could have betrayed him. Uh, 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 James could have betrayed him. Andrew could have betrayed him. Peter could have betrayed him. But Judas sold him out. And the Bible even makes it clear that the that Satan, listen, that Satan entered into him. That's why the Bible says, when the prince of this world cometh, he findeth none of him in me. So you have to be careful. Let me tell you something. You cannot be a servant and a betrayer at the same time. You cannot be a servant and a betrayer prayer at the same time. So we have to keep our heart. That's why it's so important that what we, we have to be careful what we listen to, that we don't allow people to, to turn our perception in regards to people that God has placed in our life. God had placed Jesus in the lives of his disciples, in the lives of Judas. Judas didn't have to sell Jesus out. He didn't need no, he didn't, how, why would you need money when your friends, when you, when the savior of the world is, is your father, when you're walking with the savior of the world, I'm telling you, it's a spirit, a spirit of selfishness that, that is what betrayal is birthed out of. The spirit of betrayal Betrayal is birthed out of selfishness, okay? When it's all about you, when it's all about me and poor old me and I, I, I'm looking out for me and I'm not worrying about nobody else, but that is not the spirit of Christ, that is not the spirit of Jesus, and that is definitely not the art of service. So uh, you have to be careful. You don't want the Satan to enter into you. You don't want to be detoured by selfishness and then allowing there to be an opening where you betray people. Betrayal always leaves clues. Don't be unwise, people of God. You have to keep your eyes open. And I think more than ever, this is a very, 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 very sobering time. It is a very sobering time. It's making us think about ourselves. It's making me think about my motives and my agenda. You know, even me as a pastor, as a leader, as a bishop, I've been examining myself. The Bible said, let every man examine himself that, that, that he be in the faith. And a lot of times we have to be careful that we don't cross over into the spirit of selfishness, that we don't cross over into our own agenda, that we don't cross over trying to be something that the Bible has not told us to become. It is time for us people of God to examine ourselves, get the mirror off of everybody else. This is not the time for you to be saying, well, God sent the coronavirus because all of these crooked preachers. God sent the coronavirus because some of my mean family members, the devil is a liar. It's time for you to put the mirror on yourself and make a sober evaluation of yourself. Check your motives. Purify your motives. Okay, let me continue reading. Let me continue. And why is this so important? Why is this so important tonight? Because we are entering into Passover. It, it, this is Holy Week. And, and this Wednesday, the day before Jesus is to be crucified, he is gathered with his disciples to give them instructions. And look what he says. I'm in the third verse. He said, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Look what he says. Number one, he rose from supper. Now, this is the art of service because whether we want to accept this or not, you're, not, you're no greater than the level you're willing to serve on. You're no greater than the level that you're willing to serve on. Uh, the, the new high is low. And if you really want to be great in life and great in the kingdom of God, you got to learn how to take the low road. And Jesus begins to teach this 
By first, he arose from supper. In other words, if you're going to be in the service of the Lord, if you're going to be a true servant of God and a servant in ministry, because I don't know what has happened, uh, but one thing that I do see happening is uh, this, this plague or this disease is turning our hearts back to being true servants of God. But I don't know what happened between TBN and between uh, all of the, the people who thinks that being a preacher is a celebrity or being a pastor is a celebrity or, or oh man, I'm, I'm Dr. So-and-so, I'm Bishop this and I'm Bishop that. But the truth of the matter, saints, that if you are not a servant, you are nothing at all, okay? You are not a servant, you are nothing at all. If you're, if you're not a servant in the kingdom of Christ uh, or in the kingdom of God, you are, you are not profitable. You are not profitable to the kingdom of God. And the Bible said, while he he was at supper. He arose from supper. So in other words, if you're going to be in service or in a, in a servant of Jesus Christ, you got to know what it is to inconvenience yourself. Come on. He was still eating, but he arose from supper to teach us that there will be times that you're calling that the ministry that God has entrusted with you will interrupt your plans. It will interrupt what you want to do. I can't tell you the many times my wife and I have been asleep at night and we see phone calls in the middle of the night for people who need prayer or maybe uh, sitting at the, uh, at the table entertaining guests and get a phone call out of nowhere for someone who's struggling or someone who uh, has a problem and you have to stop what you're doing and inconvenience yourself in order to be a blessing and in order to pray somebody through, in order to get somebody through. I don't know. I don't know where people get this from. Everybody wanting to be a pastor, everybody wanting to be a preacher, and everybody want to be the bishop and the apostles and all of that. But let me tell you something. This is a way of service. If you don't love people and if you don't uh, have a desire to humble yourself and to serve, this is not for you. I'm telling you now. So the Bible says he first arose again from supper so you need to understand that ministry is inconvenient, okay? Ministry is inconvenient. It is not convenient. If you're going to be a minister of God, listen, more than ever, now is the time to serve. Whether you could, whether you could serving online teaching, whether you're calling up people, praying with them, whether you're giving groceries away, dropping them on the doorsteps, now is the time to serve. Find something you can do on your level and serve. Then the next thing he did was, and that was number one, he arose from supper. That means that ministry is not convenient or ministry is inconvenient. Number two, then the Bible says he laid aside his garment. If you read the text, you'll see it. It's right there. He laid aside his garment. Let me tell you something. Now is not the time for us as believers to be jockeying for position. Now is not the time for us as believers to be worrying about who's with us and who's not with us. Now is not the time for us to be trying to figure out, is this my place? Is that my place? No. Right now, it's time for us to lay aside our garments. What do you mean by that, Bishop? What I mean by that is whenever you uh, saw people in the Bible, they were identified by the garments that they had on. It still is today. If you're a soldier, if you're not in civilian attire, you have on your army outfit, your marine outfit, and we identify you by the garment that you have on. Uniforms, okay? But Jesus said, look, I want to teach you something. When it's time to serve, my God, I thank you. When it's time to serve, it don't matter whether you're a bishop. It don't matter whether you are are a pastor. It don't matter whether you are an elder. Some people say, I don't clean up no bathrooms in the church because I'm a minister. Oh, the devil is a liar. Oh, I don't do this. I, I'm not getting ready to go and drop groceries at doorsteps and, and, and be out here. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm telling you right now, God has called us all to be servants. And now is the time. Listen, I don't care. You can call me Marcus. You can call me Demetrius. You can call me Strong. You can call me whatever you want to call me. 
me. Uh, but the bottom line is right now it's time for service. It's time for us to service our community. It's time for us to help people. It's time to be encouraging. Amen. It's time to be encouraged. It's enough sad news. If you want to see something to sadden, all we got to do is turn the news on. Glory to God. But we need to be the good news gospel preachers of this 21st century to let people know that yes, there is a virus. Yes, people are dying, but we still have hope in Jesus Christ. We, Even though we feel that we're affected by it personally, maybe we've lost income as well, but somebody whom God has called to be in his service has to stand up and tell the people of God that there is hope yet, to tell this world that there is hope yet, to tell government officials that there is hope yet. And it don't matter whether you get recognized and it don't matter whether they call your name and it don't matter whether they identify you as a bishop, a pastor or whatever. Listen, my mother named me Marcus. Yes, she named me Marcus and I just want to serve. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to talk for me. All I want to do right now, I, I'm, I've been going in and out, working and just doing what I can do because right now, I just believe in my heart, right now is the time for me to really be the preacher that God has called me to be, to be the servant that God has called me to be, to be in the service of the Lord. He laid aside his garments. And then the next thing that he did, and you can find this in these first 10 verses. The next thing he did was he took a towel. This is what I like. He took a towel. This is number three. He took a towel. In other words, the art of real service is you take the initiative. You take the initiative. You don't wait for somebody to ask you to do it. Real servants serve without being asked, without having to say, uh, can you do this? And can you do that? Will you do this? Will you do that? Real servants have the art of initiative. It's in them. They want to say, what can I do? They're thinking about what can I do next? How can I help my community? How can I help the seniors? How can I help these young people? How can I help those newly babes in Christ who have just given their life to the Lord and they can't come to church, but we want to keep them connected. All of those things should be running through your heart right now because you as a servant of God have to take the initiative. I know this is not something deep or I'm not giving some prophetic word, but I'm telling you right now, we need servants right now. We're, the kingdom of God needs servants. The kingdom of God needs us in full service right now. And the Bible said that Jesus took the towel. He took the initiative. Why are you waiting on somebody to tell you to go help somebody? If someone is drowning in a pool, are you going to wait on them to say help? If you see they're drowning, take the initiative. Come on, church. Come on, people of God, take the initiative, do something. You shouldn't have to wait on your pastor. You shouldn't have to wait on your preacher. You shouldn't have to wait on your friends. You, are, you shouldn't have to, your initiative shouldn't be controlled by someone else's initiative. You should grab hold to what can I do to service this community, to service the world right now during this crisis, because now is a needed time. All right. Number three, number four, excuse me. The next thing that he did was after he took the towel, the Bible says that he girded himself and then he gave the towel to wash their feet. Okay. To wash their feet. Now these were men's feet. Okay. Not women. Men's feet. Okay. First of all, these men have traveled miles and miles and miles on dirty roads, dirt roads, not pavement, not sidewalks, dirty. No telling what is on their feet. No telling what is on their feet. But this is a depiction. Let me show you what this is a depiction of. And let me tell you what the analogy of this is. Jesus, number one, was showing true humility. He was showing true humility. What do you mean? In every household in the Middle Eastern time, in every household, they hired slaves to wash everybody's feet when they came in the house. 
They hired slaves. They hired what they call low people to wash feet. And Jesus said, I want to show you something. I am the king of kings and I am the Lord of lords. I am the savior of the world. I'm well aware of my purpose. I'm well aware of what I know I have been sent to do. I'm well aware of my bishopric. I'm well aware of my place in the kingdom. But Jesus showed us a perfect example. He said, you humble yourself and you serve. You humble yourself and you gird yourself up. You prepare yourself to serve. Look, he said, I, I know, I'm well aware. Y'all have seen me raise the dead. Y'all have seen me uh, raise the dead on more than one occasion. You have seen me heal the blinded eyes. You have seen me use the, 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 cause the lame to walk, the deaf to hear. You've seen me do all of that. But I want to show you something that you only get anointed from service. Oh my God, that blessed me. You need to put that in the notes, put that down. You only get anointed by service. Come on. Everybody say, I want a high anointing. I want a great anointing. Suffering and service is what increases your anointing. Oh, that's good. Put that down. Suffering and service is what increases your anointing. I'm telling you right now, when you've been through hell and back, that's what increases your anointing. You can't buy this anointing at a 7-Eleven. You can't buy this anointing at an Ingalls or a Kroger's. You can't buy this uh, uh, an anointing at a Louis Vuitton store nor a Gucci store. But you get this anointing through suffering and you get this anointing through service. If you see anybody that is greatly anointed, I'll show you someone who has been through tremendous suffering and has been a tremendous service to the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus wanted us to know. That's what his, his desire, that's what he wanted to teach us. He wanted us to know that if you want to be great, you serve. You, 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 all of those are sitting in now talking about, I don't do that. And I'm, that's not me. And da, da, da. Service is always for the kingdom. It's always for the kingdom of God. And he ends it by saying, look, he washes their feet. Let me touch that. He washes their feet, right? To show them that he's humble. But then the next thing, this is good. He washes their feet also, and this is going to bless us. He washes their feet also to let them know I can handle your dirt. <laughs> oh my God. That was so good. Oh my God. Woo. That was good to me. Jesus said, you can trust me. That's what he was saying. He was saying, you can trust me. I can keep the secret. You can trust me. I'm not intimidated of your weakness. You can trust me. Give me your dirt. You ain't got to tell everybody else. Just tell me. You, you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to feel like you're less than everybody else because you know what? The truth is all of us got dirt. But Jesus said, I'm, I'm humble enough. I'm God enough to wash the dirt away. Come on, church. I'm, I'm, I'm God enough to wash you clean, but you got to be willing to give it to me. Y'all know the rest of the story. Peter wanted to, uh, Peter wanted to not let him wash his feet because he said that that's just a slave's role. You don't do that. You the Christ. I'm, I'm, I got the revelation that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. You're not getting ready to wash my feet. I wash your feet. Jesus said, I tell you what, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, you won't have any parts with me. And Peter in turn said, go ahead and wash my hands, my head and my feet. Glory to God. So I wanted to teach this tonight to let you all know that being a servant is high on God's list. <laughs> you, you don't ever let people fool you. And, and, and people will tell you things like they just using you. That's what they that's that's what the devil will tell you through people. They just using you. They just trying to get over on you. Oh, no. Let me tell you something. I told the Lord, you can use me until you use me up. If they using me, oh, well, it don't matter because I want God to use me until he uses me up. Glory to God. The art of service is what I wanted to teach tonight. And I want you all to know that you can never, ever do more in the kingdom than being a servant. The servant is the highest ranked position 
Come on, church. Being a servant is the highest ranked position that you could ever have and ever obtain. And I want to encourage you while this nation and this world is going through a crisis, find somebody and serve. Find some place. Volunteer if you can. If you have uh, pre-existing conditions and you can't leave your house, then do something online. Make phone calls. Do something to encourage somebody during this time. Because the Bible says we are the light of the world. You don't take our light and hide it behind a bushel. Then he said we are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its savor, it's good for nothing. It's good for nothing. Glory to God. It's good for nothing. So I want to encourage you, serve wherever you are. You may not be my church, but wherever you are, find you a place and serve God. Get busy. Uh, many of us, we can't go to church, but let's stay connected. Get on the phone and call people. Inbox people. Let them know you love them. You, you're praying for them. You believe in God for them. Amen? Let them know that. I'm getting ready to pray. I hope that you've got something out of this lesson tonight. Uh, I'm getting ready to pray. Don't, don't, and I'm going to say this again. Don't be fooled by these, the accolades of man. Don't be fooled by that. I'm telling you right now, don't, don't be fooled by these titles that we've, some of these titles they've made up in church. It's not even biblical. Don't be fooled by that. The greatest title. The greatest position that you will ever have in the kingdom is being a servant of Jesus Christ. I'm honored whenever I can serve somebody else, when I can be a blessing to somebody else. Come on. That's the greatest, y'all. That's what's great. That's what being great is all about. Not waiting on a check. Always with your hand out, oh, I, I got to be paid. Come on. You know what? When you're really called to do something, when you're really called of God, I'm not talking about having a gift because some of you will have a gift to orate, but that don't mean you're a preacher or God calls you to preach. Uh, some of you will have other gifts. But when you're called to do whatever it is you're called to do, you will do it without pay. You would do it if you were getting a check and you don't get a check anymore. You keep on doing it because you know you're called to do it. Amen? So he that is greatest among you must be your servant. Why don't you link a few people in? I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. All of you all that have, have, have joined in, all of you all that have uh, taken the time to listen to the teaching tonight, all of our destiny partners, make sure if you see some of our destiny partners that's not on, I want to explain a few things right after I finish praying. I want to explain what our a resurrection weekend is going to be like because we're going to celebrate Jesus. We're going to celebrate his resurrection and I'm not going to put anybody in harm's way and I'm not going to put anybody in a place to where they could contract the COVID-19 virus, but we're going to celebrate Jesus' resurrection all weekend long. So I'm going to pray. Uh, why don't you uh, please, ma'am, if you see someone that's not on, invite them in. Or if you know someone that needs prayer, invite them in. I want to pray real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just come to you now. Thank you for another time to be able to teach your people and to share with your people. And Father, I thank you that even right now, during this time of crisis, God, that you have anointed us. You have called us to serve, Lord. So let us not forget that. Don't let fear blind us to what your original calling is for our life. And that is to be servants, God. That is to be those who operate in ministry and do what it is you have called and anointed us to do. Father, I pray that you would give us creativity, God, that even during this time where we're not able to go to the house of God, that God, you will give us creativity, that you will give us witty inventions, God, so that people will feel the heart of Jesus Christ, that people will know Jesus Christ, and that even during this time, that souls will still be saved, that churches will still grow in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I just pray for those who are dealing with anxiety, that's dealing with fear right now, God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, God, and I pray, God, that you would allow them sleep, rest now in the name of Jesus, God. I come against a hypertension and blood pressure going up because of these circumstances. God, heal your people, touch your people right now. I rebuke the spirit of depression right now. 
I command depression to go in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. You are defeated in the name of Jesus. I command depression to go and I command oppression to go in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the power of addiction right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you for peace in every home that is represented. Let peace abide in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God be present in their homes, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them feel you close, God. Hallelujah. Let them feel you close, God. God, now is the time where we grab hold to our relationship with you, God, our personal relationship with you, God, even during this time, Father. And I pray, God, that you will supply every need, God, those who are struggling right now. They haven't got their unemployment check and they don't know what's happening or what's going to occur even with it, God. God, be Jehovah Jireh, the God that sees and provides in the mighty name of Jesus. God, do it right now. We praise you, God, and we give you glory. I pray for this nation. I pray for the world. I pray for our president. I pray for all of our government officials. I pray for scientists right now. I pray for those who are working on creating a cure for this thing. But Father, we know, God, that your blood still covers, that your blood still works, God, and that your blood is an antibiotic and your blood is a, a, a vaccine. So Father, I pray right now, God, let your blood cover the United States of America. Let your blood cover our homes right now. Let your blood, God, cover the those who are, are essential workers and have to go into work, God, cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. They're literally risking their lives, God, to make sure that this country still runs. And I pray, God, not only that you cover them, but give them special favor, God. Open up doors. Let supernatural money show up in their bank accounts. Uh, hey, glory in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I know you're able to do it, and I know you will do it. And God, we give you the praise for it even right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, Woo, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I want to give y'all some instructions and uh, uh, we're going to post a flyer right after this. But all of our Destiny partners that are on, Destiny partners that are on, if you know someone that's not on, make sure you help share the information. Okay, we are going to have Resurrection Weekend. What are we going to do? Friday, from which is Good Friday, Friday from 12 noon to 3 o'clock p.m., I will be at the church as your bishop and your pastor serving you Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. We will only let eight people in the church at a time. Amen. And we will practice social distancing. If you and your family want to do communion together, then we will we will work that out for you guys to do that. But we will be practicing social distancing. So stay in your cars. Once you get there, stay into your, in your cars until you are uh, uh, notified to come on out, get to communion. I'm going to be serving Holy Communion Friday at the church starting at 12 noon from 12 noon to 3 p.m. So you can come and bring your family. You can come and receive the Lord's table. Amen. Uh, we will, everything will be properly sanitized. Uh, uh, there will be nothing that will be a, a danger to your life, okay? So we're gonna ask you to come and receive the Lord's communion on Friday, Good Friday at 12, starting at 12 noon. I'll be there at the church and we will be serving the people of God and we're gonna have eight to come in at a time. Eight is the number of new beginnings. So eight will come in at a time and we will in turn serve you and your family and whoever else that wants to receive the Lord's table during this holiest time of the year for Christians. Um, secondly, Saturday, Saturday at three o'clock p.m., three o'clock p.m., we are going to be doing another giveaway for the community and it is for the children, for the children. We're going to be giving out candy bags, uh, or what Easter bags for children Saturday at three o'clock p.m. until we run out. Whenever we run out, we run out. Destiny Life Center, we want you to be there first so that you, we can be a blessing to your children. We're not going to allow COVID-19 to spoil our Easter and our resurrection. We're still going to be a blessing to our children. We're going we're gonna to do it safely. We've already got a plan to where it is safe and that social distancing is practice, okay? All right, so that's Saturday. Sunday, 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 Sunday. Everybody, Sunday. We are going to do the service on live because it's going to rain Sunday, okay? It's going to rain and we can't do a pull-up service on Sunday because it's going to be raining. This is the instructions. I want you guys, don't just roll over and grab your phone. I want you to get out of bed. I want you to put the service on 
your television if you can. I want you to put on your Easter outfit. Some of y'all had already bought your Easter outfit. I want you to put your Easter outfit on and I want you to watch the live and I want you to take pictures with you and your family in your home, in your home, okay? In your home or maybe outside in your yard and I want you to hashtag it, hashtag it, Destiny Life Center. And I want you to send those pictures in because we're going to stay connected even Sunday. So Sunday at 10 o'clock, we will have a live service from Destiny Life Center Church uh, we're going to preach the word. Uh, it's going to be a great, 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 great live worship. And we want you to take pictures with your family in your home. Put them Easter outfits on. I know some of y'all already bought y'all dresses two months ago. My wife bought hers about a month ago. So I want everybody to put on your nice outfits. What it, People say, I, people ought to not buy stuff for Easter, whatever. I, I get it. But why do we do that? We do that because when Jesus was beat, he was beat. And his blood was robe, his robe was bloody, and he, they took his robe off. My God! And they they even gambled his clothes because that means that his clothes was worth something. That's a whole other teaching because everybody thinks Jesus was poor, but that's not true. Uh, but that's another teaching. But huh, glory to God! But he 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 was put on the cross naked with nothing on, nothing on. Glory to God revealed his nakedness to the whole world that we might be set free. But when he got up, he got up with a new robe. My God, a white robe, white linen. And my God, that represents us putting on our new outfits. Those are where your new outfits for Easter. That's the revelation. That's why you're really supposed to wear it. It's a celebration. Amen. It's a, pre it's a celebration. So I want to keep that same tradition going. Put that outfit on. Take your picture. You're going to tag Destiny Life Center in it. Post it on all of your social media. Uh, and we're going to celebrate the birth, the, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I just gave you what I call the resurrection challenge. Okay, I just gave you what is called the resurrection challenge. What is the resurrection challenge? Let me give you the, let me give it to you again. The resurrection challenge is you're gonna put your nice outfit on like you're going to church, like you're going to church Easter Sunday. Come on, church, your Easter Sunday outfit. I don't care if it's your hat, mothers. If you're listening, you wear hats. Put your hat on. Put your best on. You're gonna watch the live and have church in your living room. Then you're gonna take a picture. And hashtag it, Destiny Life Center. Make sure you tag our church page in it. And this is not just for Destiny Life Center, but any of you all that's, that that are going to be home, uh, and most of us should be home, all right? Uh, that's what they're telling us, stay home. So take those pictures and, and let's celebrate the resurrected King, Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's celebrate the resurrected King, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, you have an opportunity to give those who who want to give, uh, those that want to be a blessing, someone will put the, put our cash app up. Uh, you can be a blessing right now. Of course, we're still doing 21000 If you want to sow a seed of $20 uh, every Tuesday, as long as the Lord will be our strength and as long as the Lord will provide, and I know that he will, every Tuesday is going to be Giving Tuesday. This past week, we gave uh, to our police department, and then we gave to those who work on the COVID-19 floor. Uh, with those who are dealing with the virus and many people are putting their lives on the line. Essential workers, we're being a blessing. We gave away gift cards and and words of encouragement. So we're continuing to do that. If you want to sow a seed, you can do that. If this word bless you tonight, you can sow uh, directly into our ministry. You can sow Destiny Life C. Cash App, sign Destiny, capital D, Life, capital L, and then C, capital C. You can be a blessing. I pray that this teaching tonight was encouragement to you. Thank you all for joining us. All of Destiny Life Center partners, we love you. We miss you. Uh, I hope that I will get to see some of you all for Holy Communion on Friday and then bring your children on Saturday. Uh, you just stay right in your car. We're going to just be a blessing and hand you. Uh, your children, candies, and things that we always do during this holiday season. So again, I miss you all, and I hope to see you all real soon. Uh, keep the faith. Hold on. It is a rough time. We're not denying that, but we serve a God that is able. He said, whatever you commit to him, he's able to keep it. And the Bible says, now unto him that is able, 
uh, to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the throne of grace. So let's be prayerful. Let's be mindful of one another. And again, uh, I'm going to replay this a little later on tonight for those who made it to get to watch it. Uh, but I want you to remember that we're going to celebrate all weekend long. Amen. We're going to celebrate all week weekend long. Be there Friday, Holy Communion at the church, 12 to 3. And then we're going to give out uh, a community giveaway to not only our church, but as many people that want to come three o'clock on Saturday, we're going to be giving the children uh, candy. And then Sunday on live, we're going to celebrate and we want you to do the resurrection challenge. All right. Well, it's been a blessing. I love you guys. Uh, it, it's always an honor to be able to share the word of God with the people of God. We love you. I appreciate you. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of those who are connected to Destiny Life Center that continues to give your tithe, your offerings, your support. Uh, we really, 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 my wife and I and the team at Destiny, we really, really appreciate you. Teamwork makes the dream work. We cannot do this on our own and, and you cannot do it without money. So I appreciate all of you all that even though you're going through some things of your own and, and, and it's so much su such a time of uncertainty that you're still giving and you're still making sure uh, that ministry is running and that we're able to minister to people weekly, uh, even during this time of the COVID-19. So we love you. God bless you. We appreciate you. And until next time, may the Lord bless you real good.